Gracious Lord, how grateful we are for the day and for the opportunities that you grant us to turn our ears and our hearts and our heads toward heaven. Thank you for this Palm Sunday and for the upcoming Holy Week that reminds us not just of parades, but reminds us also of gardens where agony and groaning took place. That reminds us not just the parades and gardens, but also a hill where a cross stands. I pray now that Ricky might die, that Christ might speak. I'll be behind the cross. And may the words be heard be the words of a risen Savior. Lest we forget his agony. Lest we forget Gethsemane. And lest we forget his love for us. Amen. Well, welcome, my friends, to the virtual worship of First Baptist Church West today on this Palm Sunday, a day when we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. On this day, where he is celebrated and affirmed by the masses before the week is over, the same one that they celebrated, they will be asking to be crucified. We are now moving into that time of Passion Week that we commonly refer to as Holy Week. Much happens from Jesus' beginning entry into the city to the time we get to the end of the week. I pray, trust, and hope that you spend this week reflecting on those moments and praying about God's commitment and his love toward you and how your life might bear fruit for him who has paid the ultimate sacrifice that we might have a right to the tree of life. So join me for a moment, if you will, today in a Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, verse 43. The Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke today, chapter 22, verse 43. Thank our music ministry for blessing us so wonderfully well. Luke 22, 43. And we read these words. And an angel from heaven appeared unto him and strengthened him. And an angel from heaven appeared unto him and strengthened him. Pray with me, if you will, for a little while today from this subject, Resources for the Road. On this strange journey of life that we're all traveling from the cradle to the grave, the crucial question that concerns us most is resources for the road. Are we properly equipped for what life might bring? Can we be sure that we will not outlive our money, that our health needs will be met, and that our faith will not falter? Will we have enough hope? to defy the corroding influences of years of disappointment? Will we have enough love to triumph over all resentments and betrayals to keep the fire of true devotion to God and service to others ablaze in the threats of blowing winds of despair? Have we got strength for the strain? Days come to all of us when we sense our weaknesses and our inadequacies that make us despair for life itself. There are times that come to both saints and sinners. You see, being blood washed does not make any of us immune to this truth. It happened to Elijah under a bramble tree when he declared, it's enough, let me die. It happened to Jeremiah when he sought to resign his heavenly commission and speak no more in his name. It happened to Peter when he denied three times in a knowledge of the accused Savior. And it happened to Paul who declared that the stone in my flesh is more than I can bear. Take it away, Lord. And now in the dark garden named Gethsemane, it happens to Jesus. He prays, Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. There in the garden, our Lord in his humanity wrestles with the meaning of limited resources. Something within him was depleted. 
His prayer did not come with ease, but with struggle. In fact, we hear more than once he prayed this prayer, Father, if this cup can pass, let it pass. The Bible even goes as far as to say that his anguish during his prayer was so great that his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. Father, if this cup can pass, let it pass. You see, for Jesus to be the savior of the world, he had to be tried and tested in every way, just like us. And one of those ways was to know the darkness of struggle that comes with limited resources while facing a great challenge. Mm, mm, mm. Then, at the height of the struggle, at a time when the outcome has yet been decided, we read this text, and then there came an angel from above to strengthen him. While the outcome is still in question, help comes from above. An angel from heaven appeared unto him and gave him strength. Rabbi Duncan once declared that if he could be any character in history, the one that he would choose was to be the angel in the garden who strengthened Jesus in his agony. That angel that night tilted the scales of human history. That angel that night gave strength to a man whose strength was almost gone. There appeared unto him an angel from heaven who gave him strength. And while it is not clear how the angel gave Jesus his strength, I want to offer to you what every angel does when they appear on the journey of life to those whose strength is almost gone. And here it is. First, the angel strengthens Jesus by providing the fellowship of presence. While others had been called upon to watch and pray, they were not up to the task. If you read this entire chapter, you will hear that Jesus does not go to the guard alone. He takes with him Peter, James, and John. He invites them to be with him and to pray with him and to be there for him in this moment. But each time he went a little further to pray, to come back to see if they were praying, he found that they were asleep. And while there were others not up to the task, thank God, there was an angel who would not leave Jesus alone. In John Bunyan's Pilgrim Progress, young Christian is losing his nerve in the darkest part of the valley when suddenly from somewhere ahead of him comes the sound of singing and the wayfarer of the night hearing the voice of unknown travelers in front of him the songs of another pilgrim of eternity there in the valley beside him finds his courage reborn and his faith renewed. The angel provided fellowship in the fray. And sometimes it is enough to give us newfound strength to know that we're not alone. How many of us have known the counsel of a friend during troubled times that steadied us in a crisis? How many of us have felt the touch of compassion during times of loss through an embrace that came our way? And how many of us have received the word of cheer when the load was heavy? All of these acts were strengthening angels who met us in our place of need and would not leave us alone. There is so much authentic fellowship can do. The psalmist says, how good. And how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell in unity. And Paul says, I thank my God for every remembrance of you for the fellowship that we share. You see, fellowship can lift a bowed down head and fellowship can mend a wounded spirit and fellowship can put fight in our faith. The angel strengthens Jesus pro providing the fellowship presence. You can be that angel for someone else today and this week and even this month or this year by just being there for them when they need you. My pastoral minister that is often overlooked in this age of ministers being a CEO running a growing corporate structure with complex needs or pastoral visits, those moments that pastors spend in the hospital room, in the home, and the common places of life where the flock live are the things that make the difference. 
I cherish those moments when I've been able to hold a hand and pray, share memory that we held in common, or cheer a youth in competition. Just this past week, as our own sister Mother Greer was slipping away, I got to see the witness of strengthening angels as many of you in our congregation made your way to the hospital room to pray with her, to be present with her, and to encourage her as she made her way toward her final journey. In each and every one of those acts, you were strengthening angels, even as the angels strengthened Jesus. The fellowship of presence connects us to one another and connects us to God in ways where hope is stirred and sorrow is banished. The fellowship of presence tells us that no matter the test, we're going to make it somehow. The angel strengthened Jesus by providing the fellowship of presence. But there's a second thing that the text tells us. The angel was a reminder of Jesus' purpose. You see, life can take us on so many detours that we can easily lose the sense of purpose. Jesus did many wonderful things in his life, healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding the hungry, giving opportunity to those in the margins of life. Jesus even challenged injustice and expanded person's view of what was possible for their life as he did for Mary Magdalene and Zacchaeus and a man possessed with a legion of demons. E even children found special meaning for their lives in his presence as he picked them up and held them in his arms and blessed them. However, none of those reasons was why he came. He came to pay a debt. He came to be a ransom. He came to do what the blood of bulls and goats and doves nor any other sacrifice had been able to do since the race was still in its infancy. So in a garden, the fall came, and in a garden, salvation was decided. The angel strengthened Jesus by reminding him of his purpose. The journey that he had embarked upon was the course set by the Father for him. His life would not be taken, but it would be given. This would be the witness of love that would never be matched. For greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. For you see, there are some cups that cannot pass. And on this journey, we'll have to drink from the bitter cup from time to time. But as long as that cup is God's will and we are fulfilling God's purpose, God will provide the strength we need, even if it means sending an angel our way to strengthen us. The angel pointed Jesus to the path that would make a difference for everyone because everyone needed a Savior. Only some would be healed. And only some would be delivered and only some would receive a miracle, but everyone needed cleansing from their sins. Everyone needs a way back to the Father to be made accessible. And unlike the angel with the flaming sword that guarded the entrance of the garden after the fall, this angel came to light the way and show sinners that God was in the business of making a way home again. Jesus is that way. But to be that way, he would have to walk the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering. To be that way, he would have to climb Calvary's hill, carrying his own cross. To be that way, he would have to lay down his life to see God raise it up again. That was his purpose, to retrieve the keys of death and hell and open up heaven's gates for all. The angel strengthened Jesus by reminding him of his purpose. But finally, I believe the angel strengthened Jesus by affirming a promise. When Bishop Fisher of Rochester was being led out of the Tower of London to his martyrdom, he suddenly caught sight of the high scaffold on which he was to die. And for a moment he quailed and his nerves seemed to break. He took out his Bible and prayed, Oh God, send me some special word to help me in this awful hour. He opened his Bible and read from John 17. This is eternal life, to know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. 
And although he had read those words countless times, this time it was a message that came on heaven's wings. And Fisher cried, this word will suffice for all eternity. And he went singing to his death. I do not know what the angel said to Jesus, but somehow I believe the angel was affirming a promise. A promise not to allow the Holy One to see desolation. A promise not to allow death to have the final word. A promise that the prison keys of death would be exchanged for the keys of heaven. A promise that he would become the first fruit of the resurrection. A promise that every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. A promise that a marriage will take place and a ransom chase bride would be provided. A promise that a seat on the throne was waiting for his king. I believe the angel was affirming a promise. And I'm glad that the God that we serve lives up to his promises. There is strength in standing on the promises of God. The angel strengthened Jesus by affirming God's promises. And I will admit to you that sometimes my resources run low. And sometimes I too wonder if I have what it takes to make it to the end. But I've decided that I'm going to trust his promise to be with me. I'm going to trust his promise not to put more on me than I can bear. And I'm going to trust his promise that he will hear when I call. And I'm going to trust his promise that as the day, so shall thy strength be. And I'm going to keep believing that God is in the angel dispatching business. And if life gets so desperate and so hard that it takes an angel to help me get through it, I believe that an angel will come my way with the blessing that I need. And I believe that God can dispatch an angel in your direction to give you what you need as well because he's in the business of strengthening us when we need it most. So thank God for strengthening angels that give us what we need when we need it most. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for sending help when we need it most. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving us to our limited and depleting resources. Thank you for being the God that is faithful and who always honors his promises. Now, honor your word. May it not return into you void. May it serve the purpose that you desire and design that the glory might be yours. These things we pray in the matchless name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Well, my friends, thank you for joining us in our virtual worship here at First Baptist Church West. Easter is right around the corner. Trust, pray, and hope that if any way possible, you'll make your way to a church house, if not, even, if not First Baptist, somewhere, wherever you are, and be physically in presence to worship with other believers as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the risen King, who now sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions on our behalf. We'd love to have you to be and share with us for our Easter service. Our Easter service will be Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And following that program will be our Easter program with our young people. And we'd love to have you to share and watch our young people and others participate as we celebrate in the wonderful meaning of the resurrection. Well, my time is up. I trust and pray that you will have a great and wonderful and powerful week as you reflect upon the events of Holy Week and look forward in anticipation of the resurrection of Easter Sunday. Have a great, glorious, and wonderful week. Look forward to talking to you again soon at First Baptist Church West. <laughs>